DHA and pregnenolone supplementation, something that I've started to see uh, surface more in the TRT space or really just kind of in the fitness space in general. Some people say that you definitely have to have it. Uh, what are your thoughts? Or is it something that you think maybe you need blood work first uh, to indicate that you do? Yeah, absolutely. I would say blood work first, always whenever you're messing with hormones. Um, when it comes to, to DHEA and pregnenolone, although they are over the counter, they are still hormones. And um, you know, I would correlate that with your lab work and your symptoms. Um, so first, what are DHEA and pregnenolone? Uh, they kind of have two functions in our body. One is that their precursors are pro-hormones. So pregnenolone is kind of the mother or father or grandfather, whatever, what have you of uh, hormones. So it's at the top of the cascade. So from uh, pregnenolone, it can branch a few ways, but one of those is DHEA and downstream from that, we get things like testosterone, estrogen, estrile, you know, those type of things. So um, as you can see, like if you're messing upstream with things, you may have some effects downstream on various hormones. And that's why you wouldn't want to do anything without correlating that with lab work. Um, another vital role they play and why they're actually usually supplemented is that they're considered neurosteroids. Um, so the way that I think about neurosteroid is kind of just break up the, the name for people for kind of putting into lay terms, neuro kind of meaning brain, central nervous system, steroid hormone. So they're hormones that impact our brain. So through various mechanisms, one being say GABA, which you know, a lot of people know they can have effects on that. So we'll use these sometimes if there's a deficiency, uh, when people are having a few different symptoms and it can go kind of either end of the spectrum, either guys can be feeling super wired and strung out, uh, not able to relax. And that can be a sign of a deficiency on the other end too. You can have people who are feeling completely exhausted, tired, a lot of brain fog fatigue, and that can be another sign of deficiency. So as you can see, it's pretty nuanced. It really takes a good clinical eye to kind of tease out the symptoms of a uh, low neurosteroids. And, you know, I wouldn't just add them in blindly. Uh, that being said, what we see a lot of times is we do see a bit of a deficiency when people do start something like TRT. Um, again, kind of breaking it down in, in layman's terms. Most of us know that once you start TRT, your body stops producing testosterone. And as we talked about, these are essentially ingredients, if you will, for testosterone production. So we, we know that upstream, a lot of times is the production of those also will deplete. And that's when potentially supplementing with them could be beneficial. Oh, gotcha. And that these uh, tend to decrease with age as well, right? So possibly like if you were an older gentleman starting TRT, you would maybe be at more of a disadvantage or I guess more of someone who possibly might need to supplement on your own with them. Yeah, possibly. I think it's, uh, you know, generally we do see higher levels of these early on in development, early on in brain development specifically, and they do tend to decline. But that being said, as you know, a clinician, as we're looking through labs, we see everywhere from, you know, an older guy with elevated levels of these or completely, you know, um, decreased. And that's why you wouldn't want to just blindly start supplementing with something um, because pushing it too far can definitely have negative ramifications as well. Absolutely. And uh, something else I've seen that I can guess uh, maybe decrease uh, pregnenolone levels is uh, some of the uh, 5AR uh, inhibitors like finasteride, dutasteride for hair loss. Uh, I guess something about shutting down that enzyme can like then kind of shut down that cascade of producing pregnenolone into other stuff like allopregnenolone, progesterone. Is that correct? Yeah. So I think um, when we're talking about 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, a lot of people just think that it's the, the enzyme that converts testosterone into DHT and people think DHT equals bad because that you know, can cause hair loss. Um, but they forget that this, that enzyme five alpha reductase is, uh, a part of a lot of different hormonal cascades. Um, one of those being the conversion of progesterone into allopregnenolone. Allopregnenolone is a potent neurosteroid and it can have a sedating calming effect and it can definitely help people with their sleep architecture or just feeling not so strung out all the time. Um, so yeah, what can happen is if you are already low in something like pregnenolone that converts over to progesterone and you have lower levels of progesterone as a man, and then you supplement with the five alpha reductase inhibitors and further decrease the production of allopregnenolone, you could definitely be in a world of hurt. And that's where guys will complain of things like 
brain fog or irritability, you know, a lot of the psychological type issues that come along with some of those uh, five alpha reductase inhibitors, like finasteride or dutasteride. Gotcha. And then one last question, what, uh, you know, when you're supplementing with these best to get over the counter or best to go through a physician, I know it's kind of maybe a crapshoot sometimes on the quality that you're getting. Yeah. So, um, this comes down to personal experience, but for a long time, I've basically always recommended that, you know, if you can get something over the counter, save money, screw big pharma, they overcharge for everything. So, you know, <laughs> uh, get yourself some over the counter though. I have supplemented with over the counter and actually watched my levels decrease. So uh, I did a, a experiment on myself, supplemented with companies that I think are very reputable. I won't put them out there because I don't want to endorse or slander any companies, but I thought they were very reputable companies and I saw my labs decrease. And then we see this with a lot of guys coming through Merrick too, that over the counter actually causes either no change or some slight reduction in levels. So I found that using the, the pharmacies, slow release micronized versions of these tend to have a lot better results.